Welcome to the Tip It Maple Leafs podcast, episode 214 coming up on this one. It was a do or die tonight for the Leafs. They had to win game five or the season was over. And guess what? They did. And now we got a game six in Toronto on Thursday. Matthews couldn't play in the game. Big fucking mystery around this guy. Does he have a bellyache? Does he have something else? We don't know. No goals from the top guys again tonight. And the power play was god awful, but they still got it done. They found a way to do it. Nyes with the OT winner. Joseph Wall was amazing tonight. All this and more on 214 of the Tip In Podcast. What are we talking here? We got a little Mary Soanson situation on our hands. A possible... You're what? telling me there's a chance. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. Yeah, let's hit, let's hit the intro. Matthews, a shot. Score! Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast. I'm Chad. I'm Dale. And I just want to, before we even get started, I just want to thank all our new subscribers on YouTube and, and the people who subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, and all podcast platforms. We picked up a lot of new listeners after the last episode. Thank you, thank you, thank you for finding us and checking it out. We really appreciate it. And the Leafs win game five in Boston Stay to alive. go home. Staying alive. To try and win a home game for the first time in seven tries. <laughs> oh, man. Woo. I don't know, Chad. I don't home, know. I should say a home playoff game, not a not a home game, but a home playoff game yeah. in seven yeah. tries. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Look, a lot of good things here. I like the way they played in this game. 3-2 going back to Toronto Thursday night, win another one, and then we'll see what's uh, cooking here. Florida Panthers waiting in the wings. Don't want to jump the gun on that because there's still a lot of work to be done here. But shift at a time, period at a time, game at a time, all the cliches. But it's true because they've dug themselves such a hole. That's just where they're at. But look, I did like their game tonight. Not going to lie. I thought they played really well. I still wasn't super high on like, a lot of the perimeter shots and that I, I still didn't think there was a lot of like net front presence, but they found a way there will be a game six on Thursday. Nyes gets the winner wall was obviously the right call in net. I wasn't sure about that in the first period when he let in the second goal of the uh, game. That wasn't his fault. No, it wasn't, but we got to say, cause like, again, I'm just going to say here, well, not again, but like, whatever, just me and you, People watching this or listening probably will not believe this, but this is an actual true thing that happened. Chad and I had a little quick phone call between the third period and overtime. So the intermission going into overtime. If you just had a little back and forth, like, are we going to do the podcast tonight? Are we going to wait till tomorrow? If they win, if they lose, how are we going to do this? And right at the end of the conversation, we were like, want to pick a winner? Or two? Want to pick right. two? Like, no, nobody for the Bruins. You want to pick a guy that's going to score for the Leafs? or two, whatever. Is anybody going to believe this or not? Because you and I know it's true, but is anybody no. going to believe this? No, no one will believe it. But Dale asked, he said, let's pick a winner. I said, okay, I'll go first. I said, Matthew Nyes. He said, Matt, he said that was his pick too, Matthew Nyes. And guess who got the game winning? Matthew Nyes. And, and I went on Twitter right before overtime started and I saw eight tweets in a row picking Matthew Nyes. So something was in the blood of Leaf fans. And I bet a lot of people listening to this episode probably picked Matthew Nyes to get the OT winner. What, what do you think that is? Because I'm going to tell you what it was for me. Was it like what? Just a hunch for you or just like was there something like what? Yeah. Why? Why were you thinking that? I just thought it because in overtime, the big players usually wash each other out and usually opens up the odd person on the wing. He's playing with Tavares and Nylander. I just thought he's probably going to be left open for something, and that's what happened. Did I think JT was actually going to drive the net for the first time in this series? No. No. But he did, and the puck bounced right to fucking nice, and I loved it. Very not, nice. Not <laughs> Yes, exactly. Not going to go mental here on a win. Although they still have a lot of work to do. I thought Tavares was absolutely atrocious in this hockey game. Sure. Okay. Decent shift in, in the overtime period. 
hundred percent. But first time he didn't just stop up and take a wrist shot. If from the hash marks, that's all he's been fucking doing in this period or in this in this series. But uh, Nyes, imagine this: a puck goes in off a rebound, driving the front of the net like a mad scramble in front of the net. But all of a sudden, there's some white fucking jerseys there, and 23s there, and he fucking puts it in the net. Imagine that you create some net front fucking presence you bang one in to win a fucking game just they've been lacking on that man and like needs to be more needs to be more that's how you do it that's how you do it right there yeah but i'm gonna tell you this for me the nice thing was like it was an easy easy fucking thing because i know mccabe scored the first goal i'll get into it a little bit whatever like not gonna do a full breakdown here we'll just kind of just give our thoughts but honestly nice in the first period I think it was the first period. It might have been the second period, actually. I'm not sure where he was uh, mixing it up with like Marchant was kicking around and Pasternak was kicking around and Mar and Nyes was right in the fucking middle of it. And he's like looking right at Pasternak, a premier player in the league, in the in the world, one of the most one of the best hockey players in the world, fucking David Pasternak. And Nyes is just looking right at him. He's like, "What are you fucking gonna do? <laughs> what do you, What do you want to do, bud? Yeah. Like I've never like that's a like it was also because it was Morgan Riley. He was stepping in there for sure. But he's a fucking rookie. He's a rookie. He's a kid. And he's like, what, what like pastor. Nat's not a veteran. Well, yeah, he is, I guess. He veteran. Is. So like, but for nice to step in the middle of that and just be like, what the fuck? What, what are you going to do? What do you want to do? Like 88, you want to fucking do something or, or, or what? Like, I don't know. I just, but you got to do that. You got to do that no, in the playoffs. No, no, like, I love the look of it. Like, you could yeah. just, the camera was panning, like, just you could see his face and, like, just, he was just so engaged and, like, yeah, like, I'm not going to fucking back down from you. You want to fucking try something? Let's fucking do it right now. Yeah, I loved and, it. I absolutely I loved, it. loved it. I loved it too. So that, yeah, that he, was a big part of why I was like, nice, just looks like, okay, this guy might be like a little fire. I like the fire, Chad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, he looked engaged. He had a little fire. He got in Pasternak's face. You could notice him tonight. That, and I could say that for a lot of the Leafs that I could not say that on Saturday night where I noticed them tonight. But you know what? The big, the big thing to take away from this game for me is two things. They didn't roll over and die. One, they didn't roll over and die without Austin Matthews. Two, they finally beat Jeremy Swayman. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I wasn't even like, thinking. I wasn't even Swayman thinking Swayman finally lost to the Leafs, and now he's got to go back to Toronto, and he's on a losing streak against the Leafs for the first time in his career, or you, this season anyway. You, you think there's any chance that, like, there's just a small percentage of, like, Boston mindset be and I know the Leafs oh. mindset like trust me like I I know the Leafs are not super yeah calm. Boston Boston is 100% got doubt in their mind now thinking like we can't do what we did last year here again yeah because it's it's probably eerily similar to last year the feelings that they have I I don't know but I, I'm assuming that it's eerily similar and now they got to get on a plane like they were probably thinking today after watching Florida stomp tampa bay yesterday like they were probably watching and thinking all right we got the panthers we just got to win tonight and we're going to play the panthers by, by the way i i, I think that i think tampa kind of got a raw deal in that game but anyway they did get ahead. a raw deal yes but we won't get into that no um but either way i think boston was like you probably it would be hard not to think you're up three one the way Toronto played in game four i feel like boston came out tonight thinking this was going to be an easy game it wasn't toronto brought a good game but I think when they're getting on the plane and they're heading back to Toronto, there's got to be a part of them that's like, fuck, like, fuck. Yeah. I oh, can't believe be. we're doing this. Yeah, there's got to be. So it so, wasn't like a, that you barely won game four and then no, you no. lost in game five. The and Leafs gave them game four. They gave exactly. it to they, they gift wrapped it. Fucking they gift we, wrapped it to them. Every Leaf fan thought this series is over after game four. You can't tell me the Boston Bruins didn't think this series was over after game four. Now sure. there is totally doubt in their mind as they're packing their bags heading to Toronto. Yep. You I can't don't tell me there's that. not. No, I, I don't disagree with that. But I think that you're going to see a different Boston team on fucking Thursday night, 100%. So yeah, the, but everyone talks about Montgomery and the way he's coaching. And and out coach Keith and making changes. This happened to him last year, and you could see it on the bench that it was in his head too. Like, oh fuck, oh god, not again. You're right. I I don't think this was this was coaching tonight though. 
I like I wouldn't pin this down to Sheldon Keith. No, no, it coach wasn't coaching, but I mean, does he go? Sometimes what coaches do is when things happen like this and it gets in your head, they overcoach. Like, is he going to go back to Allmark and take Swayman out because he's like, oh fuck, I fucked with the rotation that I was doing all year, and that's why we didn't win tonight. That, that that'll be the put, that'll be the storyline going into Thursday. Yeah, and then you put Allmark playing, in, and maybe the Leafs win again, and all of a sudden, you know, things that, can unravel pretty quick. That, that will be a storyline for sure going into Thursday night. Who's playing a net for the Bruins? Mm -hmm. It but shouldn't they, be because Swayman gave up well, two goals again. Like no, oh, I, he's not the reason. He's not no. the reason they lost the hockey game. Boston looked flat. They they didn't. Okay, do you think like I think the Leafs outplayed them here? But do you think like it was like do you think it was so much that like the Leafs were just that much better, or do you think Boston was just like ah, they kind of no showed it? They kind of no showed it. Well, uh, take away game one because I think game one was kind of a write off in which the game, is, which is sad too. It's sad. There's two games in this series where the Leafs have kind of handed it to Boston. One and four, baby. Right. But in games two and in game three, they were pretty close games. And I never felt in either one of those games that Boston was dominating. And I think when Toronto actually plays a game and actually fucking shows up to play, they're just as good, if not better, than Boston most of the time. But I just don't understand. The Leafs have a tendency. Like, I would love to be like, oh, the Leafs are going to come into game six and have this same game. The Leafs could go back home and have another game four and this series is over. And I would not be surprised. Would you? No. No. Not at all. Like, like, look. Like, I think the Leafs played well with what was at stake here. But I still wanted to see another level. And again, I don't want to go crazy here because I'm I'm excited that they won and they're forcing a game 6 and 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 we'll see what happens here. But like again, like for what was at stake? What was at stake on Saturday? They they should have fucking like to me, if they end up losing this game, it, this series in 6 or 7, I'm always going to look back to that Saturday game and be like, "Where the fuck were you there?" Cuz that's where you yeah. lost the fucking series, okay? In game 1 too. Sure. Like a couple no shows like uh, no without a doubt so like but again like with what was at stake here like i still wanted to see a, a a bit of a higher level i thought they played good but again still couldn't score couldn't score on the yeah. fucking power play well, it's, over yeah. three on the power play again one for 17 in the series on the power play chat the bruins are six for 14 after tonight on the power play i'm sorry that, okay. that to me is just like one for 17. Like, can I be wanna... sun? Can I be sunshine guy? Please. Everybody fucking hates sunshine guy, but I'll no, be... I'm about to not be. So go ahead. I'll be sunshine guy. Go ahead. I, I don't thought, know how you, I, I don't thought... know how you can be sun, sunshine guy with a stat, like one for 17 on the fucking power play. I thought their power play tonight actually looked decent. It just didn't score for the <laughs> first. What, what, what did they have to fucking. Okay, great. It looked no, better. I, I'm saying I still think they could it, get set still, up in the zone. Great. I still think it sucks, but at least they were just fucking skating through the neutral zone and getting it in every yeah. time and not doing that fucking Boston can't handle Toronto speed. When Toronto comes in with speed, Boston can't handle it. When you slow it down and you throw it back through the which shotgun, they, which they just oh, love, they love the love slingshot. Doing it. Oh, they love it. But when they fucking do that, Boston's like, all right, no problem. So they didn't score tonight, and that is concerning. Yes, that's very fucking concerning. They haven't scored all series. That'll well, probably be the reason one, they lose. One for 17. I'm man. just saying, I'm trying to put a little positive on it. Just a tiny I don't know. dash positive. <laughs> it looked a little know. better. Oh, God. It looked okay, a so, little better. So so what? You think they're just like right around the corner from no. breaking out of that? No, what I'm saying is it still sucks that they haven't scored. But it looked a little better. Like I'm, like I'm. What this is? How look, and I still got a bruise on my nutsack. No, but I it know. looks I a know. little. It looks Dude, a little better today. Th this is how insane I've gotten to here in this series. I'm just like, don't call a penalty. <laughs> like just, just, just play five on five. Just play five on five. Like don't call a fucking penalty. I think the same thing. Like the Leafs get a power play, and you're like, oh fuck, Jesus <laughs> Christ! There goes two minutes down the fucking drain. So yeah, hell, all the momentum's just gonna go back to Boston. But okay, like I'm gonna like okay, I'm I'm gonna be honest here. Like make an adjustment though. Like when you're one and seventeen on the power play, make a fucking adjustment. Matthews can't play, so Domi takes his spot on the. We'll get into Matthews in a second here. Domi takes his spot on the power play, but the rest of the guys are still the same. It's still JT. It's still fucking Mitch. It's still Nylander. It's still Riley. I'm sorry. 
for me, I'm watching the games. You're watching the games. Everybody listening to this or watching this is watching the games. You can't fucking be still in love with 91 JT with what he's done in this series. You can, especially on specialty, you can't win a fucking draw. Domi was outrageously in, incredible <laughs> winning the night, winning the draws. And Keith is still like, even though Domi was on the power play, he still had fucking JT taking the draw. That to me is absolutely insane. So for me, it's an easy adjustment. It's super fucking easy. When the least power play was humming late in the season, not late like the last couple of weeks, but like the last month or so February, of the season to go. February okay? and March. Sure. Guess what they did? They had fucking, they didn't play JT on the top fucking power play unit. They played Bertuzzi instead and they yeah. were clicking. They were humming. So I here's know. an here's an easy fucking adjustment. Uh, I don't know. I'm coaching the team. I'm I'm watching old tape. I'm I'm thinking of like, what can I do to like potentially snap out of a tape? Uh, uh, whatever like i'm not a tape guy but yeah i might throw the tape in every you, now and like then you have vhs tapes oh, in your office yeah that's how old i am of course Th or however they watch it nowadays on the ipad whatever the fuck they're doing all right but like you take g it's a simple solution chad and i'm not saying this is the end all be all fix to it but make a fucking adjustment you yeah. take 91 off you put bertuzzi out there with the top unit and see what fucking happens. But for me, it's absolutely ridiculous that Keith again, just could not or would not see this as a possibility and make the necessary adjustments yeah. again. I'll give it to you again. Oh, for three tonight on the power play. Come oh, for on. Sure. Come I 100% on, agree with you. If there's anything that I hate about the power play more, more than the, more than the slingshot, it's that JT has become, He's like the the person on the play where the play goes to die. Like as soon as it gets to his stick, it's either a soft wrister into the crest of the goalie, or he just have you noticed he just whips passes like he's not even fucking looking. Not even he looking. Passes. He's not like, I'm gonna throw it back to the point. Nobody there. Oh, I'm gonna throw it over that. here. Nobody there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think if you take JT off and put someone else on, I don't care if it's Bertuzzi, just like you say, just mix it up. The best, the best their power play was cooking was when they replay they put JT to the second unit and they put Bertuzzi on the top unit. So why the hesitation? Why? Well, I was thinking tonight watching the game, not outside of the power play. Like speaking of JT, if Matthews did come back, would you think about JT on the third line and Max Domi centering your second line? A hundred fucking percent. Like, what was he on the draws tonight? It was insane. I think he he was like 75, 80 percent. After the first period, he was 10 for 10 on the draw. Oh, oh, Domi. You're talking about yeah, Domi. Domi, Domi. Oh, yeah, Domi. Domi. Oh, Domi was incredible. He couldn't lose a fucking draw. JT couldn't win one. And not just can JT not win one. Like, I know he had a good play in overtime and, and got the goal or whatever. And I know Domi, he has a tendency, as we saw in the two-on-one, to overthink and not shoot. And he's always looking for the pass. But at this every, time, every, Tavares every, just every, every, out of sync. Two, two on one in the third period with him and Bertuzzi, everyone knew, including Soyman, that he was passing that puck over because right. he just doesn't trust his he doesn't trust his shot. But if he's on the second line and that passes to Nylander, maybe that puck goes in the net. Yep. And I just think right now, I think JT's kind of dragging Nylander down. You gotta put JT down a I totally agree. Totally. I agree. wish we I wish it was last year and we had Ryan O'Reilly and you could just be like, all right, guess who's going up to second line center? Like, is is this is this far fetched for me to say? I thought Holmberg played a better game than fucking ninety one. I'm being dead. It, no, I'm being dead serious. No, JT's been he's been pretty bad this series. He's he been has, really bad. Man, like the when the wheels fall off, did the wheels fall off or what? Yeah. Like, holy fuck, where but, is this guy? Maybe, where is this guy? Maybe that's a bright side is that Domi showed you that he can center in this series. And you can make some adjustments. But we all know Sheldon Keefe. He don't like to change things after a win. So uh, if Austin Matthews comes back, it'll be... It'll basically be Marner goes back to the second line, Nylander the third line. Like, he'll just go back to the old ways. That's how that's how Keefe is. I'm not sure about that, to be honest with you. Just because they're in such desperation mode, I could see a situation where... okay, they well, finally, let's talk He f finally puts JT on the third line? Well... Yeah, I think so. Like, I, I could see a situation where potentially Mitch and Austin reunite. But, I mean, this is pure. Sp and and then you go Domi back with, like, Nylander and Nyes. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Like, yeah. I don't know what, what Keith's going to do here. But 
do you want to just take a second on on Matthews here? Like, what what do you like? This is not fucking food poisoning. This isn't the fucking flu. No, they're just not. they're just absolutely bullshitting the fucking media and the fans. Like, why don't you just say it? Why don't you just say he's got a fucking he a groin injury? He's or, got something. You don't you don't if you're. If you have a belly ache, you don't go on the ice. Dude, come on. This it's morning. not a nail. Chad, it's not. No, a that's what I'm illness. saying. If you have a belly ache, you don't go on the ice for eight minutes and then leave. No, he was testing something to see if he exactly. could go. Like if you have a stomach ache, you know you have a stomach ache when you you don't need to put your equipment on and go out on the ice to know if you have diarrhea. No. You're either shitting your pants or you're not shitting your pants. That's no. the end of the story. It's total. Maybe he did have something, but that's oh, not I what's, think he did. But I that's not what that's not what this is now. You, you could see in game four, he looked back to the train. I don't know if you caught this. He looked back to the trainer and he was, he basically said, I think this is what he said. He's like, I can't fucking skate. I can't skate right now. So oh, I didn't to, see that. Okay. There was the camera pan to him where he went, he, you could see him looking back to, and he like was like covering his mouth with his glove, but you could see him. He said something to the trainer. He wasn't covering it fully. And it looked close to along the lines of like, I can't skate. I can't fucking skate. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, so that's got to be lower so, bodies. It could be a groin injury. It could be, I don't know. He was so great in game two, like so great in game two. And then he caught the food poisoning or illness and he was kind of like not great in game three. And he was a ghost in game four. Oh yeah. Like, didn't do anything. Well, dude, so like, it, it would make sense that something other than a, just a fucking flu bug is bugging him. But what, what, what does it take to like take your gear off? in the second inter intermission of a game where you basically, I'm talking, going back to Saturday here to take not gear up. Well, like what is, what, what is going on with somebody where like you basically know, I know you're down three, nothing, but if you lose that game, your season's basically fucking over. He decides to take the gear or was it his call? I mean, ultimately it is his call. If, it, if that was me sitting in the stall, like, and I don't know what's going on with this guy. Hopefully we'll find out. Hopefully he can fucking play on Thursday because we fucking need him. But like, if that's you, Depending on what's going on, I don't know what's going on here. But if there's something I could freeze up or if there's like you look back to Matthew Kachuk playing with what a broken fucking sternum all the way to the stand. What was it? A broken sternum all the way to the Stanley. Yeah, it was something like that. He couldn't like his, even get out of bed. In the his brother had to fucking help him get out of bed. But this guy was on the ice every fucking night, giving it a hundred fucking percent. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not questioning his like I'm not questioning Matthews here. OK, but I'm I'm just saying, like, if that was me, like. <sighs> I don't know. Like, would you well, not? That, would you? Would you not just be kind of like, okay? If that's you could, what's if, fucking if stupid you, about this, man. That is what's fucking stupid about this, and it's been stupid since the start of the playoffs. They don't fucking tell us. They don't say anything. So we speculate. The media speculates, and you know what happens? It turns a fucking bad light on the player. It we went. No, it went we from no me, idea. It went from Nylander right into Matthews. Exactly. Nylander came back. Matthew leaves. We're going. And everybody's like, again. what's these fucking pussies? What's wrong with them? Put a uh, freeze it up, put an ice pack on and get out there. But the fact is, we have no idea what the fuck it is. Because they're not telling us. Exactly. So it's pure speculation. This is what happens when you put a fucking cone of silence over injuries. Is yeah. everybody just thinks because he was on the ice this morning, everyone's like, oh, this fucking guy could play. He just doesn't have the heart and passion that, that they had back in the day where they don't play. But you don't know what it is. Yeah. Like no. if, if the series ends on Thursday and then he comes out and he's like, well, I don't, you know, I, I had a bruise on my leg and it just oh, really, then God. yeah, everyone will be fucking flipping their lid. But because we don't know, we just assume that it's something simple that he could freeze and get back on the ice and play or, oh, you can't play because you have a stomach bug. Get out there. It's the same with Nylander. We still don't know what Nylander was suffering from. I know Elliot Freeman reported, but the Leafs have never said, hey. You know, he had a concussion or migraine or we don't know. Yeah. So it's just it it drives me nuts. Why the fuck yeah. don't they just say this is what's wrong with them? Yeah, no, I totally agree. But NFL, like, this is what's wrong with the player. Yeah. Here you go. Everybody knows. Yeah. And NHL. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, it's like I 100 percent agree. Like, I think it's insane that they don't just like just like what? What is disclosing like disclose? Like, what is it going to matter? Like, if you just say, OK, it's I like think the other team might like target that as an injury. I don't think that I don't think the leagues like that anymore. Maybe back in the day, but not today. No. Anyway, no. Dude, you you look to like past years like we've been following this team a long time. You go back to like the early 2000s and just, you know, kind of their early 90s but like early 2000s when they were 
going to the third round and like winning two rounds every year and losing in the conference final, whatever. Um, you know, guys like Roberts, whatever. Like, you don't think these guys were playing through fucking shit. Like you don't think Gary Roberts was like oh pull, <laughs> Gary Roberts would Gary Roberts would pull his groin almost every night every night Gary Roberts would he pull his groin he still does <laughs> he still but, pulls but it. guess what he would be like he'd be like okay whatever yeah I got yeah I'm there I'm groin, on but I have a groin made of steel so it doesn't matter yeah I think uh, they gotta they gotta find a way to hire Gary Roberts I think but like Robert. you that same that same playoff Matt Sundin went out with an injury he did. But the difference was is that they announced it. Yeah. And they were he, like, this is what's right. wrong with Matt's. But then he came back with the same thing. Matt's and he, and, and he scored a huge game six goal. He did. And he came back like not even close to 100% healthy. They lost anyways, but uh, it was but still. he did score the goal. It was still huge at the time. One of my yeah. favorite memories. As Bob a Cole. Oh, Bobby Cole. Yeah. The best. The absolute best to ever do it. Yeah. But and, anyway, with the just to wrap up the Matthews thing. We don't know what it is, and I hate no. speculating. And yeah, I hate no, no. I hate being hard on the guy and calling him a pussy when yeah, I have no, no we're idea. Not, we're not what saying it is. that. We're not. We're not. No, saying but that. you see a lot of people are like, I see it all over Twitter, all over the internet. Freeze it. Get out on the ice. Get it. Well, you don't know what it is. No, you have no idea what it is. That's true. It's just it's stupid, and it's the Leafs' fault. Just fucking say it, man. No, I agree. When um, gambling gets bigger. When the NHL sports betting gets really, really big, they're going to be pressured to tell people because people aren't going to make massive bets without all the information they need. Not knowing if the guy's going to play until 6.30 when yeah, the game that, starts at fucking 7. That's like, a little tough. Uh, like sports betting's new in Canada. Like it's, it's just a few years. But when that ramps up and the NHL gets more and more involved, especially with the Vegas Golden Knights and everything, when there's huge bets being placed on the NHL, the pressure will come down the road. That I want to fucking know now who's starting a net. I want to fucking know now what the injury is and if the guy's playing. It'll be like the NFL. Everything will be disclosed. 100%. Okay, a couple quick things and then we'll get out of here. I don't know if you saw uh, Sportsnet trolling the Leafs again early in this hockey game. Do you, do you know what I'm about to say here? Yeah. Okay, Sportsnet. Sportsnet was going to commercial in the first period. Every time they went to commercial, they were playing... A Radiohead song, the song is called Just, and the chorus of that song is, you do it to yourself, you do yourself and no one else. Did you know yeah. that that was about like what I was going to say there or no? Or did you think I was going to say something else? Yeah, no, I knew you were going to say Radiohead. I thought you would uh, throw in the first line of the song, though. What's the first line of the song? I can't, can't get the stink out. Oh, yeah, no. But, well, that, okay. <laughs> that as well but the chorus is you do it to yourself yeah, yourself you do it to and yourself. no one else so like you could just see they would you know they love doing those slow motion like images going to uh commercial whatever so i'm just thinking here we go again fucking sports that they own the fucking team rogers and they're just like shitting on their own fucking their own team but they're anyway. probably pissed too because if they get knocked into the playoffs their revenue goes Woo. but like what what a song selection right like you do it to yourself yourself yeah. and no one else like i'm just i'm listening to that going commercial thinking come on like who's picking these fucking two they must the, have the same old story same old song and dance do same, it to yourself same thing right they're just looking for songs where it's like how do we fit this narrative of like these guys doing it again doing it again doing yeah. it again. Anyway. i'm surprised they didn't start overtime with this is the end <laughs> yeah by the by the doors 100 percent Anyway, um, all right. So what I just wanted to bring that up, but I guess we can end it on a positive here. A couple quick positives. Yeah, guys gets the winner in overtime. Absolutely incredible. They're still alive, fighting for another day. So, you know, you show up on Thursday. But again, chat, and I said this last, last podcast, even though we went like pretty hard on them, like, you know, everybody the, did. The not end, just us. Everybody did. Of course. How could you not? After that performance, how could you not do they anything? Shit the bed. How could you do anything but not shit on these guys for what they put forward in game four? Like, come on, let's get serious. But, you know, okay, we'll see. So they live to fight another day. Nice, huge winner in overtime. Joseph Wall, clearly the right, Keith finally makes an, uh, the right call and it, and it paid off with Joseph Wall. For me, the rest of the, so looking forward now here, I guess is where I'm going to go with this. I'm not going to touch on Mitch tonight because whatever. He was okay. Was he great? No, I don't think. But like, We'll have a ton of time to talk about Mitch, right? So I'm not I'm not really going to go to Mitch yeah. here. But if this series end, we can really 
like if they get knocked out, we'll tear down Mitch and JT. Oh. Like we'll go through all that when that. A hundred percent. So like I'm not gonna go, like we went a little hard on Mitch last time, but deserved, deserved. So well deserved. you know, I I don't think he was great tonight. Better, better, not great, not the performance. Not great, I'm but looking I actually for. noticed him tonight. Sure, sure. Like he didn't pull a Marchant in Game Four or Game Three. Like not anywhere close. But no. okay, we'll see what Mitch has got on on Thursday night. We'll see, but. Anyway, like, so Nice gets the winner. We'll see what happens on Thursday night. But Joseph Wall, for me, I still think, and I, I, I guess I'll, I'll end it on this and wherever you want to go here, I still think um, this really rides or dies with Joseph Wall. And, and that's crazy to say for, like, a rookie goaltender, but I really believe, like, he either wins them that – maybe that's a little strong. He either keeps them in – well, maybe it's not. Maybe, Joseph Wall wins them this series or – that's too much to say. Like they still need the offense from guys like Marner and JT to contribute or potentially wall could maybe do this not on his own, but another performance like that, a one, yeah. you only let in one goal. Well, <laughs> and again, no. again with, sorry, Chad, before you go, I should have said this again too. I know they won two, one in overtime, but once again, they only scored two goals. Like they, yeah, I said that off the top. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. But anyway, yeah, go ahead. The Joseph wall thing. Like, what do you think? Like is, Joseph Wall has to play two games where he lets in one less goal than the guy in the Boston net, be it Swayman or Allmark. And that's going to be a tough task because the Leafs don't fucking score goals and those guys don't give up goals. Can he do it? I don't know. We'll find out. The thing that I think about after watching tonight, would we still be losing the series had we started Wall at the beginning? We'll never know. Like that. maybe would he have made a couple of those soft saves? Like the in game three, the the shot, the Joe Newendike shot from yeah, the Frederick, hash marks. Frederick, Frederick, yeah, from Frederick, the fucking, from the fucking hash marks. Like if would Wall have made that save? Blocker maybe. low side, blocker low side from that. Maybe hat. Wall yeah. makes that save and it's <laughs> one nothing, and we Joe, win that game. Joe Newendike and Patty the Leem, two thousand. Yeah, was it was it, the two? exact same shot. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, we will be back Thursday after the game. We got a game six, baby. We're still alive, so that means Chad and Dale still got a job to do. Yep. So now. until then, I'm Chad. I'm Dale, and we will. Hey man, can't wait to see how this baby plays out. Like. Talked a little about false hope last podcast. Do you do you I just, false hope here, Chad, or you think they got a chance at coming back here? You win game six, obviously you got a fucking chance. But... I said it. I even said it last podcast. Are they? Cool? I, are I, they, said, are I they... said there's always a chance. And you, this was your quote. You said there is no fucking way in this life that they win this series. And I said you're probably right, but there's always a chance. Are they fooling us again? Are they fooling us? They're again? They're probably fooling us again. But you know what? As soon as the game starts, just like tonight. I wanted them to win so fucking bad. And I'll be the same way Thursday night. It's like, no matter what, as soon as the game starts, I'm like, well, I can't cheer against them. I got to have them win. But anyway, hopefully it's not false hope, but we'll find out Thursday. Yes, we will. Any final thoughts? No. All right. That's it. That's it, baby. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Please, if you're watching this on YouTube, we would really appreciate it. Give the thumbs up to this video and subscribe, subscribe. to our YouTube channel. We will bring in you. We will be bringing you incredible content through the next game or two, or if they lose throughout, like locker clean out, Keith getting fired, maybe Shanny. We'll see what happens. We'll don't be wanna, here. Don't want to jump the gun too far because they're still in it. They're still alive. So we'll see what happens. But we really appreciate the support, guys. So please like the video. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And Thursday night, who knows? Want to make a prediction or we'll just see what no, happens? No, God no. Yeah, Fuck no, no. No, can't make a prediction with these boys. I'll uh, stay that. We'll see you Thursday. Yeah, we'll be back after the game on Thursday night. Guys, thanks again. We'll catch you later.